Anybody else want a whiskey? Yeah. All right, look. Pay attention, everybody. Wadsworth, am I right in thinking there is nobody else in this house? Mm, no. Then there is someone else in this house. No, sorry. I said no meaning yes. No meaning yes? Look, I want a straight answer. Is there someone else or isn't there yes or no? Um, no. No, there is or no, there isn't? Yes. Please! Don't you think we should get that man out of the house before he finds out what's been going on here? Yeah. How can we throw him outside in this weather? If we let him stay in the house, he may get suspicious. If we throw him out, he may get even more suspicious. If I were him, I'd be suspicious already. Oh, who cares? That guy doesn't matter. Let him stay locked up for another half an hour. The police will be here by then, and there are two dead bodies in the study. Shh. Well, there is still some confusion as to whether or not there's anybody else in this house. I told you there isn't. There isn't any confusion or there isn't anybody else? Either. Or both. Just give me a clear answer. Certainly. <clears throat> what was the question? Is there anybody else in the house? No! no! Hey, <sighs> let me ask about producer Deborah Hill, who's no longer with us, but she was on that film with you. Yeah. Um, like, explain to me the dynamic with her. She came from kind of the world of independent filmmaking, right? Where a lot yeah, of... Yeah, she made films with John Carpenter, horror films. Right. Obviously um, a lot of drive, right? Because you don't have a lot of resources in that market. Again, I wouldn't know. I was in, in London and I I didn't know who she was. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got a clue happened because Peter Guba, who was uh, an executive producer, partnered with John Peters, um, he came to London and met me and said he had just a project for me. I don't know why he thought that, because we'd only been talking for about three minutes when he said that. Um, but maybe he'd seen one of my plays. I don't think so. Um, and he said, come over to Hollywood and meet John Landis. And I'd heard of John Landis and I'd seen Animal House. I, hadn't, I didn't know people's names, but I thought Animal House was one of the funniest films I'd ever seen. Um, I still think that. Um, And so, and I thought it was a good idea to go over to LA and meet John Landis because I'd never been to the West Coast and I'd certainly never flown first class. And I thought this may be my only shot. Um, So that's something I've got to experience. So, so you know, I flew over there and... um, I was staying at the Chateau Marmont, which in those days was rather run down and seedy. It wasn't the trendy, fashionable place it is today. Um, Belushi had just committed suicide there and it was, you know, they didn't have room service. It wasn't a fancy hotel. Mm -hmm. Um, But anyway, so the next day I met John and, um, and Deborah. And it turned out that the setup was that Deborah had had the idea for making the movie. She had taken it to Peter Goober and John Peters because she needed big producers to to support. I had a deal somewhere. And they'd said, let's give it to John Landis. So it had gone to John Landis. So Deborah was the real producer. Uh, Peter Goober and John Peters were were executive producers, which in films means they help make the deal. And they they give you their advice. And um, anyway, when when I gave the script in, which I thought was, it was very hard to write. And I thought, they're going to hate this, which is how I usually feel when I show anyone one of my scripts. And um, they loved it, to my surprise. And it got set up at Paramount. And um, then by the time I, it was ready to be made, John had taken on other films and didn't want to do it anymore. And he said, would you like to direct it? And I said, of course. Oh, sure. Yeah. Because no, how often does anyone offer you a Hollywood film to direct for the first time? Right. Uh, Ah, Don't you touch me!
as you. They must have, and not just my face. They know every inch of my body. And they're not the only ones. <gasps> it's you! There's something funny going on around here. I don't know what it is. No, I'm not on duty. But I have a feeling that I'm in danger. You know that big, ugly house on top? Hello? Hello? Are you there? What's this? Another door. It's not the film I would have chosen to start my career with because it made me instantly into someone who does broad comedy. And that's not necessarily who I was. It was just one of the things I did. But, um, but I was very grateful to be given the opportunity. What do you think of these personalities? And Deborah was, the, was great. She was a really nice producer. And, very helpful. And I, I really was immensely fond of Deborah. Yeah. And we kept in touch afterwards. And she was a sweet person. She had a, a terrible illness and end, and it was very sad. That was my next question. I was just kind of curious what you thought of some of these players in retrospect. And uh, Landis, you think back, do you, have you talked to Landis since the movie? Oh, yes, many times. Yeah, Not and? all that recently. Um, but yeah, Landis was uh, was a friend, and and uh, I I liked him. He was going through a terrible time because he was on trial for the Twilight Zone accident, and I went yeah. to the trial several days, and I was convinced that he wasn't guilty, and I wasn't at all surprised when the jury came back with that verdict. Um, he was partnered with George Felsey, who I haven't seen since. Um, Peter Guber and, and I became quite good friends. He was, he was very generous to me. Everyone thinks of Peter as this kind of shark. I mean, he's got, uh, it's, I, it was not my experience. Um, because after that, after Clue, I made a film, I wrote a film called Nuns on the Run. And uh, which I don't know if you've ever seen. Yeah. And, um, and uh, it was for Warner Brothers. And uh, then Warner Brothers went right off it a big way. They hated it. In fact, what they said to me, at the, one of the two meetings I had with them was, you need to get rid of all this theological dialectic. And I said, you mean jokes about religion? They said, yeah, theological dialectic. And I said, I thought all these people, you know, what business are they in? They're lawyers. They don't know about entertainment. Mm -hmm. So um, I was wrong about that, but I was right in connection with my script. So I said, I didn't want to hear any more of this crap. And I left the room and the next day Peter phoned and said, uh, they want you off the picture. So I said, okay, so we'll do it somewhere else. And he said, no, they want to keep the film. They want to do it with another director, another writer and director. So I said, well, it's mine. They can't do that. And he said, yes, they can. You made a deal with them. You gave them the rights and the deal. I didn't know, I was too naive to understand that. So I said to Peter, well, what can we do about it? He said, well, we, we can do, there's one thing we can do. We, I can get it back for you in what they call turnaround. And that means that, in the period of time that it lasts, I can get to a long turnaround. Um, you have the opportunity to set it up somewhere else. And I said, great, so we'll do that. He said, I can't do it with you. So I said, why not? He said, well, because two weeks ago, they put a project of mine into turnaround and I set it up the following week at Columbia with uh, Dustin Hoffman and um, Sidney Bollock directing and Tom Cruise. And of course it was Rain Man. So he said, they're not gonna let me do that again. <laughs> so, so he got me the script back in turnaround, but he still owned it. So I said to Peter, well, what happens if I get it set up? What do, 
what what how what will I owe you? And he said, Oh, well, think about that if you ever do it. I think he didn't think I would. So in the nick of time, four years later, I got it set up. Um, and we were just about to George Harrison was financing it and the Beatle. Mm-hmm. And um so uh I phoned Peter and I said, What are we going to uh do you know, I'm getting nuns in the run set up and it's yours. What do you want? And he said, oh, uh, just say special thanks to Peter Goober. That's it. Yeah, didn't, didn't ask for a penny. One of the best Peter Goober stories I've got comes from former Warner's executive vice president, Bill Daly, who I guess had a book about when Goober was running Sony or one of the studios and it was, it was Sony, yeah. yeah it didn't go well under his stewardship and the book is basically a dumpster fire probably somewhat exaggerated of his his tenure there and Bill Daly walks over to Peter Goober when he gets to Warner Brothers and says hey I read this book on you would you mind signing it Goober signs it dear Bill next time I'll try to do better <laughs> <laughs> you know, just like a genuine like that's that's so like him actually he did better than anybody gave him credit because yeah, a lot of the films he set up um which didn't get made till after he didn't come out till after he'd left were quite successful yeah um but that's a very that's a funny story about peter it is I can uh, see that happening. It's just such it's like his personality in a nutshell, yeah. in a way that everyone probably appreciates. Hey. Your road to redemption is paved with tombstones. No quarter, kill all masters. Go to no quarter, kill all masters.com. Rated R. <laughs>